face has hit the ground running in CS2, with winning two tournaments and reclaiming the HLTV number one spot in the world. But FaZe is the unlikeliest team to have a CS2 era. 2023 was not the year of FaZe. They had very few appearances on the main stage in this year. And now with CS2, they won Sydney and now Thunderpick. From crazy side holds, eco round wins, and just amazing team play. Today we're breaking down key rounds from the final of Thunderpick to see how FaZe won both maps. It's an important round. VP have managed to win the last three rounds in a row and started to build a bank. And on CT side, to build a bank is crucial, since doing a full buy will be more expensive due to the M4 and Molotov being more expensive. So for FaZe, this round is to try and break the bank of VP, to not let VP get too much of a lead in the first half. Only problem, FaZe have upgraded pistols, so how can they even make this round competitive versus an open for rifles? Well, you have to understand the way VP plays. VP is a slow team and very methodical, with the way they hold, rotate and execute. And usually there are some downsides to a team like this, with pulling off fakes, taking map control and other ways to try and trick them. Only problem here is that this is Virtus Pro, and it's the best team in the world on this, so some cheap tricks will most likely not work. Virtus Pro are going two players early mid, where one takes deep mid control, while the mid players fall back from mid after using some utility to help on B. And then having one player on A site super safe inside temple with the AWP, and then the two last players are the B players. So how can FaZe play for this? Well, let us look at how FaZe are set up. They have one player outside of B, throwing utility and making sure the B players will be aware of him, and then sending three players middle, and the last player is using utility to help the mid players out. And look at Virtus Pro. When mid is so weak, and the player holding mid is smoked off, FaZe can go cave or even red room, and Virtus Pro are afraid of this, and have rotated not one or two, but all three players from B to help in middle. But this prevents FaZe from taking middle and red. But they have the opportunity to go B, where one player from mid have went back to. Only problem is that this side used to be held by 3 players, but they've all gambled to go A instead, and FaZe can slowly take cave control and ramp control. And FaZe can walk out on a free site, but again, Virtus Pro are not just giving up. And here Virtus Pro quickly finds 2 kills for 1 trade. Only problem is that they are not really able to get onto site fast enough, and FaZe steals the round away. So maybe the cheap mid fake worked. Well, the main part to this working was how good FaZe's position was in this round. Some of you did not see the mid take, where Rops, who stayed in red room and got all the information about the mid take and a one for one trade and secured a round for face. So yes, it was a cheap trick to force rotations off, but with the twist of having a mid pair staying. Blit will join in to help him, but as you said, that shuffle left the B bomb site fairly vacant. FaZe know this, they're gonna try take the fight towards CT, towards Grass from Long, and they are gonna succeed on Fame. Their Rops Lurk though is gonna be cut down, so VP can totally focus now on this B bomb site. And unfortunately, the Tech Nines, I think this is when their gimmicks do end. When the rifles are coming in, they should be succeeding. But it's a two versus two. These one-on-one -on -one fights, they have to go in favor of- I never do this, but I have a lot of returning viewers and only 3.6% is subscribed. So if you're still coming to the channel, enjoying the breakdowns, please subscribe, it would mean the world to me. This one starts off normal, with face and Virtus Pro very common setups. There are some lack in communication between B players of face, where they both boost up the AWP to hold sight, and then one need to hold off the cave push where Kerrigan's hold for it, but he's on the left side, so he can't see if a cave player would swing close to the wall or further back. And then range should hold for this, but he have the bomb on his back and he wants to hide that before peeking. And this allows Flit to swing out of cave and kill one of the B players of face before Rain can trade back. And an early opening like this for both teams is crucial. Virtus Pro knows about FaZe B site setup, and FaZe knows they can win cave control. But FaZe slows down, and I can see why. They are still in need for some opening kills before trying out next execute. But since they have no mid control or anywhere else, to go slow can backfire. And here Rain have to try to find the opening, and here decides to go into Kev, a position FaZe could have won after the kill flit, since it stayed open for 12 seconds. But a great off angle is able to kill Rain and FaZe are a man down. But all of these kills and deaths have forced VP to stay, and let A be open and rather focus 2 in mid and 2 on B site, and FaZe know they have to go somewhere. And it's less of a read and more of a force and here has to go A, since cave in mid is under full surveillance. FaZe uses a lot of utility, and Air is able to get sight and bring it down to a 3v3. But there's a problem, and that is Twist. He decides he wants to be a lurker and try to get behind Virtus Pro. Since they will focus sight, only problem is that Virtus Pro has a lurker as well. So this will all be about who gets the better timing. Virtus Pro lurker clears out all of A main, and this allows Norbert to run out of cave killing Brokey and starting to defuse, since now Virtus Pro know they only have to focus donut. And here's where the twist lurk would have been amazing. 
only problem is that it's too late. And here, with the lack of team play, Norbert in the open can just defuse. Here, Rops had to swing to take away the attention of the player holding and defending Norbert, while Twist swung, and Virtus Pro takes a nail biter of a round. Three versus three now as the post plant gets initiated. That's awkward though, Twist nearly gonna be taken down as the spam starts to connect on the way through again phase taking this double donut approach brokey wants to get in towards temple so he doesn't get backstabbed by mir holding this angle waiting for norbert to make the next move pressure on vp no. but it's brokey that misses the initial shot you have got this flank on twist that could win the round However, Rops has to be taking that contact if Twist starts making the first move. He's going to be anticipated. Even though Jame hears him, he still falls. Bombs being defused. Norbert's all by himself. It's so close. But by... Wait, what? Virtus Pro win it! FaZe! They don't kill him in time. And Norbert, balls of steel, just holds the defuse and clutches it up. FaZe got the lead in the last few rounds on the T side. Now it's all about keeping it. And so far, it's going good with a 9-5 scoreline. But in this round, we are seeing classic Virtus Pro run. If you don't know, you will see soon. Face during the CT side were amazing at coordinated attacks. Just look at the mid players of face. They use the default early utility and then both turn to play anti flash. And when there is no VP aggression coming middle, they are both taking bottom mid to clear it out. And this makes sense to do to take bottom mid early when face 2B players are so dependent on early cave control, with rain taking it early. And then you need the mid support from your team to justify playing so split up on B sites. But here, the face mid coordination fail, where Mir is able to peek into middle, kill Twist without Rops being able to trade. And this is now the problem. Now Rops has to give up middle. And this leaves Rain and B site quite vulnerable. But how did this happen? Since Rain is smoked off, Virtus Pro can walk up Fortnite at any point during the round. So Rops has to hold it. And this leaves Twist to solo hold bottom mid and loses the 1v1 fight. But here, face does something crazy. Rops smokes bottom mid and calls Rain to get out of cave and join in middle to upgrade his gun, and trick Virtus Pro. They're still looking at the setup as a 2-1-1. Now with 2-1-B and only 1 in middle, and yet again FaZe plays on a methodical and slow playstyle of VP. VP goes for a 4-man take towards B site and leaves one player to fake and lurk on A site, and Rain walks back to cave. And Virtus Pro walk up into site after Rain spots them, and Eric can kill Brokey who was full blinded. Rain is able to walk out and get a trade, and 40 seconds left, Virtus Pro decides to just run back and have played face for rotations, since now face are one player on A that is rotating away. While the A lurk have gone mid, and have gotten full mid control for Virtus Pro. And Virtus Pro uses their slow playstyle to quickly switch up as soon as they had enough information to do so. And this is why their playstyle can be so strong, since they are unbeaten when they get all the pieces to the Jigsaw Puzzle. They need to shine each round. VP are going A. But look at Rops. We're talking about Mir. Rops, he's tucked away. Will they clear him? They have to flip. Yep, he's looking for him. Lovely awareness, but Brokey breaks through their lurk. And now Brokey's all by himself. They're still committing towards a bomb sign in fame. Face are back to the early utility and pushes. But in this round, we can understand how good this aggression can be versus a slow team like Virtus Pro. Face starts a classic mid take, but decide to have three players on B, meaning that A site is open. But that is fine since VP almost never tried to rush site without finishing the scouting process they always have to do. And face on B are using this smoke to take away this position on Virtus Pro and a molotoving door to make sure Virtus Pro can't go through it. And here you might think a smoke would be good to use against this molotov, but that would just slow Virtus Pro down even more since they do not have mid control so they just can't peek out of the smoke. You will see why. Face and mid have not only taken mid control, but enough control to not even allow two Virtus Pro players in bottom mid to take mid at all, with pushing into T side territories in bottom mid. And this is a credit of pickle for Virtus Pro. Flit tries to run out of smoke on B, and here is just destroyed by his own team Flash and Rain and Kerrigan ready for this. And this is how good some coordinated pushes and utility can be. And this aggression from FaZe and the lack of map control from Virtus Pro is enough to force the last two players to save, and A side that FaZe kept open was not even touched for the whole round. Showing the read face had of the play sellers Virtus Pro. As you said, Twist, he does get unleashed towards middle. Can they maintain the control? In the meantime, Carrier is also aggressing towards the B site extremity alongside Rain. I like this because it creates a pinch. And it just means that you kind of get these fights in which every player is in a position to find success. Perfect. Not once, but twice. This is really well done from FaZe. It's like they're holding their entire defense up really high. And VP, they have to walk into these close angles. They're not expecting oh. so many players and so much pressure to be there. And you've also got these bait and switches. Rain makes out alive on one HP, but Twist is there to stand firm in the gap. Norbert, shadow spotted. Carrigan takes his life. Really well done from FaZe.
Even if Norbert killed Karagun, look how close Rain was. Yes, he's on 1 HP, but he can still execute. Well, that's enough Ancient. Let's go over to the most important rounds of Vertigo from the final. As we can see, Virtus Pro have gotten an amazing lead with 5 to nothing start, so FaZe has to change something, and have opted to go 2 players on B, 1 in middle and 2 on A site. This is done to allow Brokis op to be more versatile in this round, so he can peak early B stairs and then fall back to A or middle if needed after, so he's not tied down to a site. Virtus Pro are going 2 players towards A ramp and then 2 towards B stairs, and here it all starts with Jaim and the op, peaking for further back than expected and tagging Broke to 15 HP. Not ideal, and I want to see what this tag does to face. Well, after the leg shot, Broke is already leaving, since on B there are so many spots where you've just been naded to death, and it's hard to play any off angles to try and have some impact. And Broke understands that he has to run away and go straight to A site, since as we can see on A, face have way more control, and he will have more impact, and this leaves Twist behind to defend B solo, while Virtus Pro running right back to A from B, try and take ramp control, and here we can see Kerrigan using this smoke right here, that is just an improved ramp smoke, since when smoke blossoms in CS2, they do it downward, and this creates an amazing smoke for ramp, only issue is that this give away his position, as well as when being naded by Virtus Pro, they can hear a little sound cue that the nade make when they hit the player. Karangun uses the smoke to get away from Sandbag's position, now that Virtus Pro know where he is, and to peak ramp with low HP, and here are Flash and some bullets deal with Kerrigan rather quickly. Rob's trying to do some damage and get a kill back, jumps down the ladder since Virtus Pro has given away mid control, but now due to Virtus Pro getting the opening kill, they will not try to rush anything and this pays off as they're able to kill Rops as well. But here comes in the mind game, Rain have taken Kerrigan's position in sandbag, and here uses Brokey as the bait. Brokey will hold ramp, and when someone comes up, he will go for the kill and fall off, so Rain can backstab Virtus Pro. And this worked perfect, Virtus Pro does not even check Rain, and he can freely walk out of sandbags, and find one kill and makes the game to a 3v3. But Brokey oversteps and FaZe loses the advantage right away. Twist through the smoke finds one kill, Rain uses all of the ramp smokes to walk here, and he finds one more kill, and Twist and Offangle secures the round for FaZe. Are they gonna send Fame to lurk towards the B bomb site? No, looks like they're gonna go towards A. Rain, lovely bait and switch between him and Brokey. Back to a three versus three. However, Mir, lovely timing. Rears his head, swings into Brokey, and now advantage back in favor versus Pro. FaZe have both of their players still here. Twist finally gets on the board, and because of that kill, it forces Mir away. So Rain, hot on his heels. He's gonna identify no one's towards gap, but now he's being held for skulking around the smoke. Perfect timing. There's so much smoke right now. He can't see around it. Who will he see? first mere strikes drops the bomb can't quite transition to fame and now fame knows where twist is yeah, that's awkward but yeah again you gotta get the pressure oh not what you he needed say, it's on face 10 seconds let's hold it and secure it face are on a bad buy once again but we've seen how they made it work versus virtus pro and ancient and this is an important round even though Virtus Pro have the lead 8 to 1, their money is not the best. While FaZe are on a bad bank, they will need this win. So how do you win with worse guns? Well, it all starts with playing the advantage. But you will have to get the advantage first. So what is FaZe's game plan? Well, you will have to try and counter the team you play versus. And this is Virtus Pro, it's a slow team. So FaZe has set Rops to take early deep mid control to try and play on the slow nature of Virtus Pro. While Kerrigan in a great off angle plays on this whole idea that Virtus Pro have to get information. And here Kerrigan finds the first kill, since no one checked this angle. And we can see as soon as he gets his kill, Rops walks away from middle since now FaZe has the advantage. There is no need for him to push and give it away. FaZe enters into stage 2 of their game plan, take control. And here FaZe uses both rifles on A ramp to clear it out and force Virtus Pro to B. That is opened for now. Why? Kind of like we saw FaZe do an Ancient, leaving one side open to take the rest of the map and then rather play retake if they have to. And when Virtus Pro takes side, step 3 of the game plan activates, retake. And a rain from behind finds one kill, as well as the last three players comes from CT. I want to abuse that they can move and shoot more than Virtus Pro can with AKs. And rain finds one more kill, as well as Rops jumping out on the side to find two kills. And face takes around. But based on the fact there is no contact, BP just save their util. Gotta bear with for just a sec because rain has found mere advantage still here for phase. No kit, time ticking down. Fame, lucky to get away with his life, but Rain still dominating, and then Rops, he just jumps around the side. The MP9 creates so much space for his team that felt like it was done and dusted. Burst Pro. While this round sticks out, where we can see FaZe are not that equipped when it comes to utility, 
and have opted to rather have the firepower over utility, but why? Well, Vertigo in itself is a map where you don't need a lot of utility, but Vertigo a flash and one smoke is usually enough. Faze is deciding to take ramp, and here Molotov's the whole top ramp, forcing any Virtus Pro players to concede it. And this in turn makes the Virtus Pro smoke in bottom ramp quite useless, since Virtus Pro has both players in ramp and no one is scaffolding. But Virtus Pro know they have to do something. To make this run a little bit easier and goes for this great nade and flash combo to allow Flit to swing ramp as soon as the Molto fades. And here he finds one kill and face are on the backfield again. And just see this from the face player's POV. And yes, here's the lineup for the flash and nade. But Virtus Pro are not ready. James uses this flash to keep face on their tiptoes while they are in ramp. But Rain, due to the lack of scaffolding players, can sneak on by and cross to A short without being seen or heard. And Virtus Pro are now three players on site, but only one watching for the scaffolding push by Rain. But rain pushing scaffolding would be too dangerous, so he opts to wait for James to shoot some bullets and catch him off the timing of when him and Flit is walking back. And rain can get a kill without Flit being able to trade. This forces Virtus Pro to focus the last two players to hold short in this fun setup. Only problem is that one have the gun out while the other have a smoke out. And Faze are swinging fast, and here rain finds one more kill, but Flit as fast as ever smokes and gets one kill, while Norbert gets one more kill on Faze. And it's 2v3 now. But face are fast and wants to use the fact that Virtus Pro are very split up. And here kills Norbert that is overpeaking and this forces Flit to run and hide to not give face another kill before Fame can come to help. But with Flit's presence, face can't really walk back to ramp, so instead they decide to stay on site and use the smokes to their advantage. As we can see, Twist do to clear elevator position and Brokey hold short. And here he finds Flit trying to get back to A to help his teammate. And now Faze knows that Fame will be coming from backside, and Eric can 2v1 him quite simple. Well, not too simple, but Faze gets the job done. Potentially onto this A bomb site. It is fortified with three players. Flip caught out with utility. Mir cannot sustain that first frag, and now Flip is all by himself. Norbert dies at the bag. Two versus two, and Flip deep in enemy lines. They're gonna have to deal with him towards gap as Fame rotates in from CT. This is awkward. Faze are a little bit confined in the bomb site right now. When does Flit activate and where does he go? Might anticipate the phase might know he's there and in fact Brokey's holding. There's a lot of pressure now on towards Fame, a lot of utility to work with. We don't want to pull that out in the one versus two, so he takes the fight initially. We'll smoke the bomb, we'll nade towards Twist to try and disguise that he's not actually... From 1-8 to now 14-15. We are so far seeing the longest Vertigo game, and yes, I saw the Face versus Nip game on Ancient. That is officially the longest now, but it was scripted before. But I will quickly talk about this round, and then show the highlight and why I wanted to show the round. Face are back on the CT side, and here are three players on A. One mid and one B, quite default, but with Brokey being super aggressive with the AWP, while Virtus Pro are going towards B. And why? Well, B is the weakest bomb side on Vertigo for both sides. There are not many places to hide, good ones at least, and for the CT side, it's a site you pay the least amount of attention to. But Face, after Rob's clears middle, sends him and Twist together to B site. And this is a masterclass in how to defend B as two players versus five. Face and B site are playing Rob's behind the pillar, and this is a great play. Only problem is that it leaves Twist having to take the first fight alone and sell that he's alone, trying to solo defend from the rest kind of play. And as a fun little detail, in these type of holds, you have to let your actual B player on the team, for Face it's Twist, to be the first point of contact. Since if Twist was hiding and Virtus Pro saw Rob's on site, they would understand there is usually one more player on site. Twist tries to peek and have to turn from the flash, and on an instant throw this smoke to allow him to stop any Molotovs towards his position and to play with. He then peeks out, and god knows how, but he got this kill. And the reason he peeks is to get the kill, but as well force Virtus Pro to try and kill him, and not search for any other players on site. And as we can see, the two next Virtus Pro players running onto site are both looking for Twist. And here Twist, who have changed position, is able to get one more kill and Rops can spring to action and kill one more player from B. And from a 5v5 to a 5v2, a great hold. And now Face, and now Face are in the driver's seat. And they are now trying to box in Virtus Pro. And here Rops behind White is pushing stairs and Twist jumps on the box and finds one more kill. And just like that, Face 2 B player hold is just perfect. And Nets face the 15th round and can finally tie up the game again. The idea that Rops isn't behind that pillar. Twist was magnificent on Ancient. He's been far from it on Vertigo. Only 11 kills. And with Flip being spotted towards A and being fended away, no kill though. That was definitely what FaZe would have wanted. But now here comes the attack. 
peering their way in. Fashbangs go in. Molotov lands on Rock, but Twist, what is that opener? Twist holds his spray for a second, and Rops is able to get out of dodge. What is this hold? We're going to a second overtime. Flitz all by himself. He's been the talisman for Virtus Pro, but this is too tall of an order. And Face has done it, winning two events within two weeks. And now with all of the rumors of this team disbanding, we might see why they are winning then. Kerrigan always wins event when there is no pressure on him and the team, like he did with Chroman and Exist. When they were stand-ins, and again we are seeing it work with FaZe taking the number one spot and is looking to win the CS Asia Championship event. I will have some breakdowns in the coming days, hopefully you all enjoyed, and when FaZe stops winning everything, I will stop making these videos about FaZe. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and here are two videos YouTube told me you would like.